Hello ladies and gentlemen, Top Hat Gaming Man here. For many months now we have looked at the history of a different fighting game every Thursday on this channel. Amongst these videos we have looked at a lot of titles published by Capcom, including games from the Street Fighter series, Darkstalkers, the Rival Schools franchise and the Capcom vs series. Today we are going to be taking an in-depth look at a fighting game that is more obscure and overlooked than all of those, but a game that still acts as an important part of gaming history in its own right. In fact, the game we are looking at today, known as Red Earth, is a rare example of a fighting game that never made it home, and instead remained exclusive to the arcades. Today we are going to look at this game in great detail and discuss why perhaps it never made it to home consoles. This ladies and gentlemen is the mad story of Red Earth, the Capcom fighting game that never made it home. Yeah. Today's story begins back in 1996, a year we continue to visit on this channel time and time again. As you will certainly know, this was one of the key years that the paradigm shift would take place between 2D and 3D gaming, with many developers using all of their resources to jump to the world of polygons. Once again, as you will already know if you are a regular viewer here, Capcom would not jump two feet first into exclusively developing games of this style, and instead took a more cautious approach. They would test for water with 3D polygon fighters early in 1996 with Star Gladiator, but the game suffered from having poor frame rates and as a result arguably did not play as well as the company's recent 2D fighting offerings. That same year in the arcades, Capcom would release their CP System 3 board, the company's third arcade board to feature interchangeable media. This was Capcom's most powerful arcade hardware yet and the sequel to the CP System 2 board that housed the Street Fighter Alpha series. This new board consisted of one PCB with flash sims and a CD-ROM drive, with the games using a special cartridge and a CD. Capcom chose the CD medium in order to keep down the price of the system. When the CP System 3 board is first powered on, the contents of the CD are loaded into a bank of sims on the motherboard where it is executed. The program code is then decrypted at runtime via the security cartridge. The most famous example of a game released using the CP System 3 board is of course Street Fighter 3 and its updates, a game that featured 2D graphics due to a combination of Capcom having teething issues with 3D and the general producer of the series Noritaka Funamizu believing that 2D was a better direction for the series anyway. He backed this point up during the game's development by stating, we feel that 3D is not really suitable for the head to head fighting and to be frank, Capcom doesn't really have the techniques to display high quality graphics in 3D anyway. As we know, Street Fighter 3, developed throughout 1996, would be the CP System 3 board's crowd jewel. But interestingly, it was not the hardware's first game, or even fighting game. That title belongs to the very subject of this video, Red Earth, a Capcom arcade fighter released as early as October of 1996 in Japan, meaning that Red Earth provided the CPS 3 with its maiden voyage. So, with all of this in mind, let us check out this game's introduction. Yeah!
So, just from that brief introduction the game offers, no gameplay shown, but stylistically the theme of the game seems quite different from other Capcom fighting games. Rival Schools features teachers and high school students. Dark Stalkers features mostly Universal style monsters and Street Fighter offers, well, Street Fighters. Red Earth, on the other hand, appears to take the high fantasy approach. Mixed with further elements we will get to, basically making it the Golden Axe the Jewel of Capcom Fighters. Unlike most Capcom Fighters that feature a large roster of fighters to choose from on the player select screen, Red Earth offers just four, once again each of which we will get to talking about shortly. Let us begin discussing what Red Earth is all about and how it functions differently from other Capcom Fighters. Red Earth is a bizarre game when comparing it to its contemporaries. To put it really simply, the title is a fantasy-themed boss rush fighting game with RPG elements interlaced into the mechanics to try to change the pace of the average tournament fighter. When you take into account just how oversaturated the market was at the time with fighting games, these were interesting and bold moves to try and separate this title from the pack. Red Earth also holds the accolade of being the first Capcom game to feature zoom in and zoom out effects, a technique used in fighting games that we illustrated was used in Killer Instinct, which was the focus of last week's video. This camera technique in fighting games had also been popularised in SNK's Art of Fighting series, but this was the first time such a feature appeared within one of Capcom's offerings. Curiously, the game also included a password system, allowing players to save progress despite the title being a frickin' arcade game. A strange feature if you ask me, because who used to keep a pen and paper handy when simply visiting an arcade? As you can see, just from the few things we have discussed thus far, the game was very much trying to stand on its own two feet, against its more established fighting game Capcom brothers and sisters. As you would hope with a title set in a high fantasy world, the game does have a story. The title is set within the year of our Lord 13XX. The game takes place on an alternative version of planet Earth and one that has become overrun with monsters. These beasts are controlled by a villain known as the Sinister Blade, who lives atop his own floating country like a fascist Lando Carissian. Much like in Golden Axe, which we covered last week, the warriors set out on a journey to defeat the evil forces and restore peace to their land. The plot pretty much echoes every high fantasy story ever wrote. In regards to the four playable characters, each stand out and are very different in design. First we have Tessa, a sorcerologist who is investigating the appearance of all the monsters and seeking to find out who or what is behind all of the evil on middle, I mean Red Earth. Next up we have my favourite character from the game, Leo, who to put it simply is basically just a Thundercat. Apparently Leo was once a normal human, although he has been cursed with a half-beast body. His goal is to save the kingdom by any means necessary. We also have Mai Ling, as Capcom obviously thought SNK having a fighting game with a character named Mai meant there was not enough fighters with that name within the genre. Mai I guess is your typical fighting game martial artist, who has returned home from a tournament to discover her home burned to the ground. She swears revenge and no black cars or Chinese people are going to stop her. Finally we have Kenji, leader of a shinobi. He is dead set on repelling the invaders of his land, rounding off the four selectable players within this game. Looking at the selection of characters alone, the game seems to take even more eastern inspiration than it does western, which is no surprise considering that Capcom is a Japanese company. In terms of how this game controls, the cabinets feature a six button layout with mechanics being present from other fighting games. Like in Street Fighter, moves can be performed with traditional quarter circle and dragon punch motions. Pursuit style attacks like in Darkstalker series can be executed. Unlike all of those franchises though, Red Earth has no super meter system which is a huge departure from the norm of the time. Instead the game has an orb system. This means that players start fights with two different types of orbs with six different types existing in the game. These have Pokemon style elements such as fire, ice, poison, wind, lightning and poison. Players can cycle through these with the start button and use them to perform character specific moves. 
These can be used to perform super style moves known as mystic arts in this game, as well as mystic force attacks, which include elemental moves. Further from this, characters can also perform a technique known as ultimate guard. This lets players block everything for a few seconds. This is almost a prototype to Street Fighter 3's parry system. In this game, you can use it as often as you like, but you're penalised with recovery time upon its use. The game also has ultimate counters, which allow the player to strike back during block stuns. Overall, in terms of fighting mechanics, Red Earth offers nothing too complex and in many ways plays similarly to other Capcom fighters. The biggest change to the whole Capcom fighting game mix is the addition of RPG mechanics, which we briefly touched on earlier. In the single player mode within Red Earth, you can raise your character's levels as you progress through the game. Leveling up improves your character's stats such as attack and defense etc. And growth can be obtained by improving your score which acts as an experience point counter. Experience points can be procured via executing attacks from fight to fight as well as in bonus stages like this one for example which functions much in the same way as the car stage in Street Fighter 2. The levels gained can be taken advantage of at a later date via the use of the game's password system in which we touched on early in this video. Throughout a playthrough of this game, you battle your way through an 8 stage campaign and, as you would have already noticed from this video, you take on a wide variety of huge mythical beasts, each with long life bars stretching the entirety of the bottom of the screen. In some ways, I guess this game is like X-Men vs Street Fighter, but where every match is against Apocalypse. Matches take place against massive dinosaurs, evil sorcerers, and a whole range of different magnificent monsters. These huge, sometimes screen-filling characters are a fantastic change of pace from your regular Capcom fighting affair. If you are successful in beating this campaign, different endings are available depending on which character you select and secret weapons and special moves are unlockable for your character to wield. The levelling up system in this game requires a lot of grinding and repeated playthroughs. So in terms of the game itself and how it functions, I guess that is Red Earth in a nutshell. But now let us surmise why this game never made it to home systems. In many ways, this game probably would have been more fun to play in the home than it was even in the arcades, as throwing RPG elements into a game is obviously a feature that fits better into a game on a home system, due to grinding usually being a solitary, time-consuming activity. Despite these features, as you know, the game never made it home, which I am going to guess was probably partly down to circumstantial reasons. The CPS 3 board was a great bit of kit at the time, capable of some of the best sprite based games around. The most popular home console of the period, the Sony PlayStation, was not designed to do a good job when it came to 2D gaming, so was therefore underpowered and underprepared to be able to run CPS 3 games. For this same reason, it would take years for Street Fighter 3 to be available in the homes, and it would only become possible with the release of the Sega Dreamcast. Street Fighter is obviously a more well-known brand than that of Red Earth, and even the Street Fighter 3 titles sold very badly on the Dreamcast. So it is no surprise whatsoever that Capcom did not bother with the much more obscure Red Earth, particularly when you take into account that the game is even older than that of Street Fighter 3. It would have been a losing battle marketing the game on the Dreamcast on every single front. The game, even to this day, remains exclusively an obscure arcade game, but although Red Earth would never ever make it home, some of the characters surprisingly did go on to make appearances within home console games. So the history of the franchise didn't quite end in 1996. The sorcerologist known as Tessa was the first to make an appearance elsewhere, and that was within Pocket Fighter, which was released in arcades on the PS1, Saturn, and even on the PS2 as part of the Street Fighter Alpha anthology. I'll try and cover this title in depth on the channel down the line. Next up, as illustrated on the channel previously, Tessa would also be selectable in SNK vs Capcom SVC Chaos the fighting crossover game by SNK Playmore that would appear on the Neo Geo Home System, PS2 and the original Xbox. We have already looked at this one in depth last month on the channel, so you can go back and check that out if you missed it. Finally, all of the playable characters from Red Earth 
along with some of the boss characters, would make a return in Capcom Fighting Evolution. However, I am not going to go into any further detail regarding this one, as the game is going to be the very title that we take an in-depth look at next week. So I hope you all join me again for that one. So to summarise this video, Red Earth was a unique fighting game that was the first ever game to be programmed to run on the Capcom System 3 arcade board, and as a result paved the way forward for the release of Street Fighter 3. Although fantastic looking today, 2D gaming was not well favoured at the time, and as a result no home console existed in 1996 that could have ran a decent version of the game on its hardware. The Dreamcast would have been capable of housing such a title, but the disappointment in terms of both sales and reception at the time of Street Fighter 3 crushed any chances of that ever happening. The game was circumstantially locked to the arcade, which is a crying shame really, especially when you consider the game's levelling up system which would have been absolutely perfect for the homes. Red Earth's beautiful 2D sprites, unique mechanics, interesting art style and boss rush style gameplay I guess make Red Earth a pretty special little game. All of these features combined with the game's lack of visibility arguably makes Red Earth the most underrated Capcom fighter of all time, and certainly both an interesting and important part of gaming history. Such a great little gem. So ladies and gentlemen, that was the mad story of Red Earth. Why not share with us all in the comment section some of your favourite memories with the game? Or if this game's existence is fairly new to you, let me know what you thought of today's video. Please do not forget to like and subscribe for multiple videos on gaming history uploaded here every week. I already have a bunch of fighting game history videos for you to go back and enjoy. Finally, my channel is partially funded by the generous donations I receive via Patreon. Patrons can earn a credit and a shout out at the end of these videos. These people make working full time on YouTube just that little bit less scary. So I would like to thank you all very much for that. So a huge shout out to Carl Johnson, Sebastian Velez, JD Robbins, Synth Spaces, Andrew Brzezinski, Asobi Quang DX, Michael Baker, Tom Elliott, Computer Man, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Daniel Daly, RetroReversing.com, House of the Ted, Dan Barlow Jr., Joel, and all of my other patrons. Yeah. Cheerio!